Across five mainline Animal Crossing games, there's been reasons to celebrate pretty much all year round. There's all of your real world holidays like Halloween, Easter, Christmas, and then there's some smaller but still well-loved events such as the Flea Market, Bright Nights, and May Day just to name a few. So whether you're a new fan of the series or a seasoned veteran, I think you'll enjoy this deep dive into every holiday and event in Animal Crossing. Let's get started. We'll start with major holidays, ones that have been modeled after holidays that we celebrate in real life. Most of these have been in close to, if not all, Animal Crossing games. Chronologically, we'll start with New Year's. New Year's Day is celebrated in every Animal Crossing game. There's a countdown clock set up at the pond in Animal Crossing, at the town hall in Wild World City Folk and New Horizons, and at the plaza in New Leaf. It's the gathering spot for neighbors to get together and celebrate the turn of the year. Every game celebrates it a little bit differently, however. In Animal Crossing, you get a noisemaker from Tortimer in the hour before midnight, and on the day of New Year's, you can take turns making a wish with your villagers. Katrina will also read you your fortune for that year at her stand set up near the wishing well. Tortimer gives you a new diary for the year, and Mom sends you 10 grand in the mail. If that wasn't enough, you also get mystery bags from Tom Nook if you upgraded your store at least once. That's right, eat shit, Nookazon! Nintendo was 20 years ahead of you! In Wild World, the event was dulled down quite a bit, and you'll find that to be a common trend with this game. The countdown stands outside the town hall, and Tortimer gives you party poppers. Villagers gather around and count down the final minute before a two-hour fireworks display once the new year arrives. Then Tortimer gives you a fortune for the year, but you can just keep talking to him until he gives you something that you want to hear. City Folk is basically the exact same, with the only difference being that you get a shirt with the New Year's Zodiac animal on the front, and the year number on the back. And this time, Mom only gives you a thousand bells. What the heck, Mom? In New Leaf, Red and Isabel are stationed in your plaza with Red distributing New Year's hats and Isabel giving out sparklers. After the celebration, you'll get a Zodiac item from Isabel, and Mom is back to sending you 10,000 in the mail again. Nice. In New Horizons, it's Isabel and Tom Nook handing out the gifts, but everything's the same outside of that. There's other items that you can receive that relate to how New Year's is celebrated all around the world, so I guess we'll count those as New Year's items as well. Comparing this holiday over the course of all the games, I really think Animal Crossing GameCube did it best. Lots of unique stuff that made the day a lot of fun. Next up is Festa Vale, occurring in every game since City Folk. It's based off of Mardi Gras and features Pave the Peacock, who hosts the event. In the first iteration, Pave tasks you to bring him candy, which you could either grab from your storage if you stocked up from last Halloween, or earn through playing minigames with your villagers. Winning these minigames is simply a matter of answering questions correctly and earning candy. Three of any type of candy can be given to Pave for the Pave series furniture. New Leaf introduces feathers, which basically replaces candy entirely. You can still play minigames with your villagers to earn these feathers, but you'd be better off catching them from the sky. Three of any type of feather will give you the Pave furniture again, but a rainbow feather will earn you Pave's picture. New Horizons is similar, with the entire month leading up to Festival being different in that Festival clothing and furniture can be bought straight up before the event itself. There's no minigames, but villagers can still give you feathers in trade. Given the furniture variety and the means of obtaining it, I actually think New Horizons got this one right, more so than previous games. The minigames were fun, but it was just a random chance to get the candy that you needed in City Folk, and New Leaf is good, but the Pave furniture doesn't quite do it for me so much in that game. After that is Bunny Day, only appearing from City Folk onwards as well. 30 eggs are buried in your town in City Folk, 18 of them being candy and 12 of them being bunny foil. Trade those pieces of foil in for each item of the egg series from Zipper. In New Leaf, there's six elemental eggs to collect. Earth eggs, leaf eggs, sky eggs, stone eggs, water eggs, and deep sea eggs. Give one of each to Zipper for an egg basket. And then after that, you can directly crack open eggs to reveal either candy or a prize ticket or a grand prize ticket. Prize tickets are exchanged for items from the egg series again, while the grand prize ticket earns you Zipper's photo. And in New Horizons, the elemental eggs return again, except the deep sea eggs are replaced with wood eggs. The event is now expanded to eight days as well, rather than just being one day like in previous games. The holiday takes advantage of the new DIY mechanics and tasks the player to make all of the Egg Series furniture, now known as Bunny Day furniture, themselves. Find the DIYs in bottles and in balloons and collect enough of every egg to make the full set. 
Doing so before Zipper appears on Easter Day will get you two more prizes, the Wobbling Zipper toy and the Bunny Day wand. Overall, I think I like New Leaf's Bunny Day the most. It seems to be a nice balance between the simplicity of city folk and the variety of New Horizons, without making it too drawn out, like the latter does, I feel. It's not so much an event that we celebrate in real life, but it's hard not to include the fireworks show. It's another event that's been a staple of every Animal Crossing game thus far, with minor changes across the series as it's gone on. In Animal Crossing, it takes place on July 4th, based on American Independence Day. Much like New Year's, it takes place around the lake since you can't see the sky in the game, so you'll see the fireworks reflecting off the water. Not too far away should be Red at his stand selling you handheld items like balloons, pinwheels, or fans. Tortimer will also give you a bottle rocket at the Wishing Well. In Wild World and every future game, the fireworks show happens every week in August. The event features Tortimer at your town hall and gives you Roman candles and sparklers. He'll also give you a fortune that you can read in your mail. City Folk is basically the exact same as Wild World, except the event is every Sunday, not Saturday. In New Leaf, Isabel is in the plaza asking for ideas for custom designs to use for the fireworks, along with handing out hats and firework fountains. Red is back in his stand exchanging tickets for prizes that you can only earn during the festival. And New Horizons is much different from that, with Isabel accepting up to 10 custom designs this time, and Red giving out 24 different items, ranging from sparklers to boba tea. The Able Sisters will also be selling kimonos and yukatas during the month of August as well. It's really hard to say which game did the fireworks show the best, since it really hasn't changed all that much. But I do like New Leaf's variety of items that you can earn quite a lot, but the actual fireworks display in New Horizons is probably the best. So we'll give them both points. At the end of October is Halloween, that is, every game except Wild World. In Animal Crossing, Tom Nook sells candy from the 16th to the 31st, and it's up to you to stock up on candy to give Jack in exchange for the Spooky Series set items. That is, if you can distinguish him from the rest of your villagers who are also dressed up as Jack, refusing their request for candy will tatter your clothes or turn a random item in your pockets into a jack-in-the-box or a jack-o'-lantern. Skipping Wild World and going to City Folk, you'll find that some villagers stay inside during most of the night of Halloween. You'll have to dress up in a costume to get candy from them. You can use that candy to trade for the Spooky Series items again, just like before. New Leaf mixes it up a little bit, though. In the weeks preceding Halloween, you'll need to buy masks from the Able Sisters to scare your villagers. Every villager has something that they're afraid of, be it bugs, skeletons, mummies, monsters, ghosts, or werewolves. So dress accordingly to scare your villagers and earn lollipops or candy. You can play the minigames if you fail to scare them, and they'll curse you if you lose. Then you can take the candy that you earned through them, or that you bought throughout the month for Halloween items from Jack. But the real prize is the creepy furniture that you earn by giving Jack lollipops. In New Horizons, you can earn most of the seasonal furniture between Halloween by learning the recipes from your villagers. On the actual day itself, you should have once again stocked up on candy. Candy is exchanged for furniture and lollipops like before, and the lollipops are given to Jack for a couple more spooky items. You can also learn exclusive reactions and face paints during this time as well. But other than that, it's really not as good as New Leaf in my opinion. I really think that New Leaf was the most bang for your buck when it comes to Halloween. Next is Turkey Day. It was known as the Harvest Festival before New Horizons, if that name sounds more familiar to you. It's another holiday that was in every game except Wild World. You can find Franklin timidly hiding behind houses or trees in your town, scared of you initially for fear of being eaten as the main course. He wants you to get sets of forks and knives from the banquet table set up at the wishing well in exchange for items from the Harvest series set. You'll have to find him 12 different times to get all the items. In City Folk, it's a lot of the same, except you have to give your fork and knife set to villagers to get clues as to Franklin's whereabouts, and then he'll reward you with the Harvest Series furniture again. Fortune's turn for old Frankie boy as he becomes the head chef of the Harvest Festival in New Leaf. He'll ask you to fetch ingredients depending on what's being served, and rewards you with Harvest Series furniture for doing so. Villagers can give you ingredients for the dish that you need as well, and obtaining all the ingredients can range from shaking trees, foraging mushrooms, fishing, and deep sea diving. New Horizons is very similar, but with a wider range of ingredients to gather and villagers helping you out if you're struggling to get them all. 
Since it's basically an upgraded version of New Leaf Celebration, I'll give this one to New Horizons for the variety of ingredients and the much more appealing furniture set. I think that the older game's versions, while enjoyable, were just fetch quests that I enjoyed more as a kid, but maybe not so much as an adult. The final major event of the year is Toy Day, which was first celebrated in Animal Crossing. On the 23rd, Tortimer will hand out miniature cars to boy players and dollies to girl players. Ha! <laughs> Gendered toys. Then the next night, Jingle will be out delivering presents to your villagers. You can go up to him and receive an item of either clothing or furniture from the Jingle series, depending on how you answer. He'll ask if you want something big or something foldable, and then something woven or something printed. After receiving your gift from him, you can change your clothes to fool him into giving you something else. Every time you talk to him, he bounces to another acre in your town, rather annoyingly. And you can do this a maximum of ten times before the jig is up. Then the next day, you get Balloon Fight in the mail. That's right, the NES game. The event reappears in City Folk with mostly the same premise. You find them outside your town or inside your villagers' houses while they're not home, which is kind of cool. But yeah, just keep changing your look and answering his questions. Same shit, different game. New Leaf does it much differently, where they actually make you be Jingle's assistant. Throughout the month of December, your villagers will give you clues as to what they want for Toy Day, down to the color and the type of item. It's up to you to make note of these preferences, so that when the time comes to deliver the presents to your villagers, you know what to give them. Giving correct presents to all ten of your villagers will earn you Jingle's picture. New Horizons will again task you to be Jingle's assistant, except the guesswork is eliminated, as you just need to deliver presents to your villagers. You get rewards back from them too if you have a high enough friendship. The gifts they give you are also available before the event too, which is kind of lame because it really disincentivizes actually doing the event, but uh, yeah. I think the fact that effort is needed to research what good gifts are for your villagers, and the fact that it's not needlessly grindy makes New Leaf the winner for best toy day among all the games that have it. So that's major holidays. Seeing how they've changed across all the different games was an interesting journey. That's not to say though that these are the only events across the series that have been staples of the franchise. Oftentimes it's the smaller events that we remember fondly. Ones that are overshadowed by the premiere events surrounding it, but are still a lot of fun in their own right. How have these changed over time? Starting chronologically again, the fishing tourney is held multiple times a year starting in January, except in Animal Crossing, where there were only tournaments in June and November, as the summer and fall fishing tournaments respectively. In both of them, Chip tasks you to bring the biggest bass that you can from the river. Small bass, bass, and large bass are all eligible for measuring. Whether you win or not, Tortimer will give you an angler trophy in June and a fishing trophy in November. But if you do win, then you'll receive a random red or lottery item as a reward. Wild World changes it up quite a bit. The event is now held eight times a year across eight different months. And they're all the same as far as the competition itself. Tortimer hosts it this time, and it's all about who can reel in the biggest fish with no restriction as to what that fish actually is. Every subsequent fish that you bring him that's bigger than the current record will give you a random piece of furniture, and then having the biggest fish by the end of the tournament will earn you a fish trophy. City Folk mixes the two prior games, where some tournaments are a free-for-all where you can submit any fish, and some have a random fish that you have to catch. Regardless, it's all the same. Biggest fish given your rule set wins a fish trophy. New Leaf is similar in that some tournaments are for every fish, and some are for specific fish, but it's the first game that gives you a specific reward set for competing. The fish set was introduced in New Leaf, and you earn it by giving chip fish that are above average size for that fish. And in New Horizons, they completely overhauled the tournament by making it not about size, but about how many fish you can catch in 3 minute rounds. More fish equals more points, and then those points are exchanged for fish swag, which is just the fish series items again. Accumulating 300 points earns you the gold fishing trophy, which is the final prize. Points remain across fishing tournaments, so you can do all this on the first of four fishing tournaments throughout the year, or take your time with it. Up to you. Of course, there's always the fishing tournament's counterpart, the bug off. There was no bug off in Animal Crossing, only first appearing in Wild World. There, Tortimer measures the bug, and the system for earning prizes is the same as the fishing tournament, with furniture rewards for every record bug you bring him. 
City Folk adds a couple of elements to it, taking into account the bug's rarity and luster. Rarity is self-explanatory, but luster is a random score assigned to every bug that can earn you more points. The awards are the same, obviously being bug trophies this time instead of fish trophies, and the insect set is awarded to players in New Leaf for giving bugs that total over 80 points. New Horizons, once again, makes it about how many bugs you can catch in three minutes. Good for people with wide open islands, not so good for the cottagecore islands that run at five frames per second. It depends on what you value in these tournaments in regards to which game did it best. Personally, I much rather prefer trying to catch the biggest fish or the rarest bug like how these tournaments were held prior to New Horizons. Now it just feels like a grind to get all the rewards. No challenge, just mindless fishing and bug catching. Not a fan. So what are some other non-headline events that come to mind? Well, new players to the series won't remember since they didn't add it in New Leaf and New Horizons, but the flea market was an event that is fondly remembered by those who have been around for a while. It was an event that happened once a month, with a couple exceptions if it was overridden by another event. It acted the same in both games though, where you could visit villagers' houses and buy stuff that they had for sale. That feature still remains, but it's sporadic and not really a full-blown event. The real fun, though, in this event was having your villagers come to your house and buy stuff from you. Whatever you have in your house was fair game. I remember very fondly the days of stocking up on expensive fish the day before and selling them at ludicrous prices the next day of the flea market. Good times. Bright Nights is a Wild World exclusive event that lasted for an entire week in mid-February. For that week, villagers have decorated their houses with lights, and it's up to the human players in that town to be the judges as to whose house is best decorated. After accounting for all the votes, a winner is selected and is dubbed the bright star of that year's festival. Even if there isn't really much participation on the player's part, it was still a fun little event that gave some charm to Wild World since it didn't include a lot of the more major holidays in the game. The next event was only ever featured in one game as well, and that's the Sports Fair, an event exclusive to Animal Crossing. It happens twice a year, once in spring and once in fall. In each fair, there are four sports that your villagers will partake in, with two of them that you can play along with yourself. The first is gymnastics, which is more or less competitive group stretching. That runs from 9am to 11am, and the player can compete along with the villagers. After that is the foot race, a five lap race around the wishing well. Players can also compete in this event as well, and that lasts from 11am to 1pm. Then there's the ball toss. This one isn't too well liked by most of your villagers, but regardless, runs from 1pm to 3pm. And then finally there's tug of war, where two teams of two villagers compete for two hours to see who's the strongest of all. This event is silly, fun, and just memorable in every way, and I'm really upset that they never brought this back. And if this is the first time that you've seen it before, I hope you share my anger. Come on, Nintendo. April Fools was never celebrated in Animal Crossing, so there's really no point in talking about it. Psych! April Fools, stupid! This event went hard in Animal Crossing. Tortimer gives you a jank NES game that doesn't even work. Mabel exposes Gracie as a fraud. Pelly and Pete finally go on a date. Tom Nook closes shop. Porter says that Rossetti is bald. Tom Nook starts selling very saucy bikinis. <laughs> wait, wait, did they really do that? Tom Nook has a 90% off sale, Blathers finds a fossilized alien, and Booker loses 20 pounds. Except they don't. April Fools, seriously, they went so hard on April Fools in this game. It's celebrated in games after that, but it's, it's never as good. It's never as good. City Folk was pretty funny, where you get a leaf item that is literally just a leaf. Blanca also disguises herself as villagers in New Leaf, and you have to figure out who the real one is, earning their picture if you do so correctly. New Horizons, uh, you get a whoopee cushion. During the second week of April, spring is celebrated in Wild World with the Flower Festival. You have a week to decorate your house by making the best garden possible with flowers. Villagers also compete in this event, and the winner is chosen by Tortimer, who will mail you a flower trophy if your garden beats everyone else's. Which is to say, steal everyone else's flowers, put them down outside your house, and reap the rewards of a rigged festival because animals are not sentient enough to know that you would do such a thing for personal gain. Idiot! For that reason, I loved this event as a kid. Nothing even comes close to that level of buffoonery. 
More of a seasonal event rather than an event proper, the Cherry Blossom season has been featured in every game in some form. Animal Crossing features a celebration around the wishing well with your villagers happily skipping around tables of food, and Tortimer gives you a pink tree model. The season overlaps with the Flower Festival in Wild World, but isn't formally celebrated in that game either or future ones until it becomes a time of year where you can catch cherry blossom petals for DIYs in New Horizons. Still, there's something iconic about the cherry blossom season that makes me want to include it on this list, even if it's not the most notable event. A new event added in Animal Crossing New Horizons is May Day. It runs from late April to early May, and there's a one-time maze set up on a special Nook Miles island that you can solve to meet Rover, the only time of the year that you get to do so. Solving it requires picking up items on the ground to craft with, and maneuvering your way to different trees or rocks that you must dispatch of using the materials that you gathered. Bell vouchers can be picked up to earn a little optional reward for those that solve the puzzle efficiently. The next day, you'll be sent your vouchers in the mail, and your prize from Rover, being his briefcase for solving it the first time, or his picture for solving it a second time. I really like events like this, ones that aren't necessarily real-world celebrations, but rather ones that are sprinkled throughout the year where it gives you something to look forward to in the absence of a real-life holiday. It reminds me a lot of the older games, and I like that. Another New Horizons only event is the wedding season, which lasts for the entirety of June. Reese and Cyrus rent out Harv Studio to take photos to commemorate their marriage. It's up to you to design various scenes for them, including a chapel where they get married and a wedding party, just to name a couple. The more you design, the more heart crystals that you earn, which could be used to buy items from the wedding series. There's also wedding clothing items available at the Able Sisters during the month as well, and some wedding items in Nook Shopping. More of a notable event if you're more keen on decorating, maybe not so much if you're like me though. Still, it's the only time of year that you can earn the wedding stuff, and people seem to like this event enough for it to be on par with all the other events that I've grouped it with. One of my personal favorite events in any Animal Crossing game is the Acorn Festival. It's unfortunate that it is only ever in Wild World, but it was a week-long event featuring Cornimer, who is not Tortimer, do not be spreading lies otherwise on my YouTube.com page. He uses his powers to spread acorns around your trees during the second week of October, and your job is to retrieve them for the Mush series items in return. Rewards are given for returning certain amounts of acorns, up to 230 of them to complete the full set. Do not give him a rotten acorn though, or he will not give you any points, and he'll double your current loan that you owe to Tom Nook. Okay, that second part was a lie, but imagine. Anyway, I loved this event as a kid. The combination of Cornimer being a fun character, and the Mush series being one of my favorites will make me always remember this event very fondly. Similar to the cherry blossoms, the mushrooming season isn't an event per se, but it's a fun time of the year since the beginning of the series. You might hate the event if you're a morning person if you play Animal Crossing. In that game, five mushrooms spawn every day in your town from the 15th of October to the 25th. The catch is that they all spawn at 8am, and one disappears every 15 minutes after being found by your villagers. So you gotta be up pretty early to grab all of them and sell them for a pretty good price. A fun minigame, even if it would be pretty annoying to those of us on a degenerate sleep schedule. In City Folk, mushrooms stick around all day and have five different varieties this time. Mushroom furniture will also be disguised as regular mushrooms, and it's the only time of the year to earn this set. New Leaf is similar, but it added the famous mushroom that allows you to grow in size temporarily. And New Horizons turns mushrooms into crafting materials being used for the mushroom furniture and for some food dishes as well. Birthdays are not formally an event, but every Animal Crossing game has celebrated them in one way or the other. If it's a villager's birthday, then the celebration ranges anywhere from just having a reminder on the bulletin board, like in City Folk, to being able to give the villagers gifts in Wild World, New Leaf, and New Horizons. The player's birthday is usually a bit more extravagant, however. In Animal Crossing, you receive a copy of Donkey Kong for the NES from a random villager, and Mom also sends you a cake in the mail. But that's not video games, so that's not as cool. In Wild World and City Folk, it's just a few letters from your villagers and your mom with a birthday cake item. But in New Leaf and New Horizons, a villager will bring you to their house and throw a proper party for you. In New Leaf, you can blow out the candles by blowing into the 3DS microphone, <laughs> and you get a birthday item depending on your friendship level with that villager. You also get to make a wish as well. 
in New Horizons, you gotta break open a pinata and distribute the cupcakes that you earned from that to your villagers in exchange for birthday items as gifts. Keke will also make a visit to your island on your birthday, and that's the only chance that you have all year to earn KK birthday. Despite Wild World and City Folk birthdays being a bit underwhelming, it's definitely something that's gotten a lot better as time has gone on. Which is nice to see, given how many of these events seem better in older games. That's all I can think of for events that aren't quite major, but are still notable in their own way. But that's not to say that there are still a lot of minor events throughout the year. Oftentimes, these are celebrations sprinkled throughout the year that don't really warrant a whole event dedicated to them, rather just a small gathering that celebrates a real-life day or a day that was completely made up. Regardless, let's quickly talk about those, even if there isn't a whole lot to mention for some of them. Lottie Day is a Wild World exclusive event where your villagers will suggest new town tunes. They'll sing it to you and you can decide whether it's good enough. Yay Day is another Wild World exclusive where villagers and the players practice their pickup lines by complimenting one another. This increases friendship levels with your villagers. Lunar New Year happens on the Chinese New Year in real life. It's a Korean exclusive event in City Folk, but in New Leaf you receive a yut board from Isabel, and there's a few seasonal items in New Horizons as well. Groundhog Day is on the 2nd of February, and in Animal Crossing, Rizeni will announce how much longer until the spring season. In City Folk, New Leaf, and New Horizons, you'll receive a Rizeni model from Tortimer, Isabel, and Nook Shopping, respectively. Prep your mailbox for a bunch of Valentines from your villagers in Animal Crossing. Valentine's Day appears again in City Folk, with Brewster serving you hot chocolate instead of coffee. Isabel sends you a chocolate cake in New Leaf, and you can get a chocolate heart in a bouquet in New Horizons. At a random week in January or February, Tortimer will ask you to operate the lighthouse in his stead while he's on vacation. Doing so successfully every day while he's gone will earn you a lighthouse model or chocolates depending on the month. Leap Day happens once every four years on February 29th. You don't get anything for it, though, except the post on the bulletin board, which is pretty lame. Shamrock Day takes place on St. Patrick's Day in New Leaf, and you get a shamrock hat from Isabel. You can also get a shamrock door plate, rug, and soda in New Horizons as well. Nature Day appears in most games, but it was known as Greenery Day in Animal Crossing. There, you receive a tree model, and in City Folk, you get a cool globe. Wow, that's sure a cool-ass globe. You receive another cool globe in New Leaf. Damn, that's a cool globe, dude. And in New Horizons, it's a seasonal event where you can order a cool globe from Nook Shopping. Well, if that ain't just the coolest dang globe I ever seen, then I don't know what is. The first day of May is Spring Cleaning Day. You get a dump model from Tortimer in Animal Crossing, the only game where this event appears. Children's Day is only celebrated in Japanese versions of Animal Crossing, but there is still cart banners around no matter where your copy of the game is from. This becomes an obtainable item in City Folk, albeit again in Japan only. And in New Leaf and New Horizons, you get a newsprint helmet and a carp banner as well. Teacher's Day is a day where teachers are celebrated for their tireless work despite barely livable wages, high cost of expenses and supplies, and poor treatment from parents and school staff alike. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding, you get some red carnations. International Museum Day encourages you to fill out stamp collections around exhibits in your museum, earning you plaques for the completion of a respective area. Mother's Day is the only way to receive a lovely phone in Animal Crossing, and the only way to receive pink carnations in City Folk and in New Leaf. You get a Thank You Mom mug in New Horizons from Nook Shopping as well. The Summer Solstice was a European-only event in City Folk, earning you an espresso maker. In New Leaf, the sun stays out for all 24 hours of the day, and you get some ladder shades. In New Horizons, your reward is a sunflower crown. Father's Day earns you a locomotive model in Animal Crossing, and red carnations to pair with your pink ones for Mother's Day in City Folk and New Leaf. And another mug in New Horizons to go with your mom mug. Aww. Before group stretching was a thing in New Horizons, morning aerobics was a month-long event in Animal Crossing that you had to get up at 6 a.m. for and stretch with your villagers at the wishing well. Doing so enough times earns you a radio which allows you to stretch from the comfort of your own home. August 21st in Animal Crossing is Founders Day, where Tortimer will give you a weed model as a reminder of the hard work of your town's founders. Whatever that means. Labor Day takes place on the first Monday in September, and in Animal Crossing, you get you a shop model if you talk to Tortimer. In City Folk and New Leaf, you get a picnic basket from Tortimer and Isabel, respectively. Mayor's Day celebrates the re-election of Tortimer as your mayor in Animal Crossing. To distract you of any suspicions of unfair elections, he gives you a wishing well model. 
The autumn moon is visible in the reflection of your lake in Animal Crossing, and Tortimer gives you a moon furniture item in celebration of the Mid-Autumn Festival. Depending on your region and city folk in New Leaf, you receive either a wheat bundle, veggie basket, or dango. Explorer's Day occurs on Columbus Day in real life, and you can earn a bottled ship in Animal Crossing and a sailboat model in North American city folk in New Leaf copies. Honor the Good Boys, Copper, and Booker on Officer's Day. It's based on Veterans Day, and you can earn a police model from Tortimer in Animal Crossing. Black Friday? Never heard of it. All I know is Nook Friday, or Sale Day as it was known in older games. In Animal Crossing, grab bags replace non-furniture items, and they contain a variety of different things, from furniture, clothing, wallpaper, carpets, or pinwheels. In New Horizons, Tom Nook slashes prices by 30% until the end of November. The winter solstice is the opposite of the summer solstice, where the town stays dark for the entire day in New Leaf. It's a good thing you get that glow stick from Isabel. And finally, on the anniversary of your town's creation, you can talk to Isabel in the town plaza to receive a sapling clock to honor the time that you've dedicated to your town in New Leaf. And that is, from what I can find, every holiday, event, celebration, or whatever you want to call it, from the entire Animal Crossing series. So whether you remember these dates fondly or have never heard of them at all, I hope you enjoyed hearing all about them. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. It's not like most of my challenge-style videos, but let me know if this delve into Animal Crossing history is something that you want to see more of. Suggest video ideas in the comments or in the Discord, tweet them to me, put them in my Twitch chat, or really whatever's cool with you. Thanks again, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.